Hey, what's up guys? This is Hot Boys Garage, episode 21, where I'm gonna teach you how to install and program a two-step into your Dynatech programmable ignition for your first-gen Honda TRX 450R. As always, this video is gonna be pretty comprehensive, so if there's parts you're not interested in, or you wanna skip to a certain part, you can check the video description. There'll be a timeline in there that'll allow you to skip around to whatever part you're interested in. So a two-step, what is it? We're basically gonna set one lower rev limiter for long and then a higher or normal rev limit for when you're racing or riding down the track. And uh, two steps these days, they can be pretty complex, like in newer ECUs for street bikes or cars, where they can control ignition timing, fueling, rev limit, and a whole lot more. But the one that we're gonna set up in this video for the Dynatech ignition is actually pretty simple. So what is this gonna allow us to do? On the starting line with your clutch in, you're gonna be able to go to wide open throttle and hold it there without actually being at your full or higher rev limiter that you're gonna ride a race at. And then when you let go of the clutch, thanks to a micro switch in the clutch, you'll then immediately be at your higher racing or riding rev limit. So why would you wanna do this? Well, it's mostly applicable to drag racing, but really you can use it for all kinds of riding styles. If used right, it can make your launching a lot more consistent and predictable. It can be used as a tuning tool so you can adjust and test what RPM you're leaving the line at, and then possibly you could help your engine live a little bit longer. If you're doing a lot of racing, you're not gonna be holding your throttle wide open, waiting for the lights to drop or the the gate to drop at your full or higher RPM rev limit. So the basic premise of what we're gonna do here is you're gonna have a clutch lever with a micro switch built into it. We're gonna have an ignition that is programmable. And in this case, it is a Dynatech ignition. And then we're gonna wire the ignition's curve selector switch into the clutch's micro switch built into it so that the ignition knows which rev limiter to use, clutch in versus clutch out. I'll show you how to program the ignition with Dynatech software so that ignition curve one will have a lower rev limit for when the clutch is in, and curve three will have our normal slash riding racing rev limit for when the clutch is out. We'll then set the Dynatech ignition selector switch to curve three, and we'll be good to go. I am gonna make a couple of assumptions in this video. One, I'm gonna assume that you have some basic wiring knowledge, and two, you've already got a Dynatech programmable ignition either installed or ready to install. A couple of other notes, this video is gonna be specific to the generation one or 2004-2005 Honda TR rx 450r quads it might be similar for other years or models so take that for what you will this is also going to be specific to the dynatech programmable ignition so later on we're going to talk more about curves one and three when we're actually programming the ignition and so curves one and three those things can't be changed with the way we're wiring this up this stuff is specific to the dynatech and the same goes for the wiring into the selector switch and the same goes for the wiring into the switch clutch lever which we'll get into later if you've got a different ignition say like a vortex or an msd some or all of this may not apply so let's get to it first up to remove your old clutch lever and install the new clutch lever you'll need a ratchet an extension and a few metric sockets you'll also need some allen wrenches or some allen sockets to remove the bolt from the end of the handlebars and then to remove the plastic assembly on the handlebars that houses the uh, kill switch like the on off switch the light switches and the hot start you'll need a phillips screwdriver and then to assist with removing the clutch clutch cable from the clutch lever, I recommend a decent set of pliers. A few other tools that'll be handy, a set of snips to snip zip ties and or cut wires, a set of vice grips, a razor knife or box cutter, and a good pair of scissors. Depending on how you seal up your electrical connections, you might need some heat shrink wrap and a heat gun. And if you choose to solder your electrical connections, you'll need a solder gun, some solder, some flux, and a brush to apply the flux. You're definitely gonna need some wire. I think this is either 12 or 14 gauge, just common electrical wire that you can find at the hardware store, some black electrical tape, and then if you prefer not to solder your wires, you wanna do it the quick and dirty electrical connection way, you'll need a couple of these connectors. Hopefully I can get the camera to focus here. But if you don't want to solder, you don't have a solder gun, I'll show you how these work later on in the video. Also something I forgot, if you're not planning on soldering your connections, uh, you'll also need some of these uh, butt splice connectors as well. Moving on down the line, depending on how you do your electrical connections, you might need a crimper, and regardless, you'll definitely need a wire 
stripper. And then for parts, you'll need to get a switched clutch lever. Now this one is from MPS Racing. It's their adjustable switch clutch lever. There are a few different flavors out there, but uh, this is the one that we're gonna use in this video. You'll also need your Dynatech programmable ignition selector switch. It looks like this. And then you'll also need the Dynatech USB programming kit. And uh, the part number for that is right there, DIPK-7. It includes uh, this Dynatech USB adapter, cord, uh, the software driver, and some instructions. And I'll open this up and get a picture of it and uh, put it in the video now. And then lastly, you'll need a laptop or a PC that's running a Windows operating system. So right now, this uh, laptop runs Windows 7, which is kind of older. I don't know exactly what all Windows operating systems uh, this guy is compatible with. I would suggest consulting the Dynatech website or giving Dynatech a call and asking them if whatever operating system you're running, if uh, this is compatible with it. All right, first things first, you're gonna pull your hood off, which uh, doesn't require any tools. You just kind of gotta pull it up out and you're gonna remove your Dynatech selector switch. Next, you'll remove this bolt from the handlebars. Remove whatever grips you've got on here. These aren't stock, by the way. You'll remove the switch assembly from the handlebars uh, by removing these two Phillip head screws. And then you'll remove the clutch cable from your current clutch lever. And so to make that easier, I recommend coming down here to the left side of the engine, removing these two bolts from this clutch bracket, and then removing the clutch cable from the arm here. So that that's gonna give you a lot more slack up here to be able to loosen this set screw up and remove this end of the clutch cable from the clutch lever. So then after you've got that done, you'll need to loosen up the bolt or bolts and remove your current clutch lever. Next, you wanna take your selector switch and carefully cut a section of the shrink wrap off of the wires. And I usually do this in the middle, but you can kind of do it wherever you want. Just when you're doing it, make sure you're only cutting through the shrink wrap portion and not into the wires themselves. So this will expose the three wires inside of the selector switch harness. So the newer selector switch harnesses have a green, a black, and a white wire. And then the older selector switches, which I have here, have a green, a black, and a red wire. And don't pay any attention to these connectors. This is where I've hooked up a two-step before on this one. But at any rate, the only two wires that you're gonna splice into on either one of these is the green and the black one. So on the old ones, you're not gonna splice into the red. The new ones, you're not gonna splice into the white. Next, cut two sections of wire. And I think I cut mine around 16 to 18 inches long. Uh, you can cut them a little longer if you wanna be safe. But we'll use these wires to tap into the selector switch wires. So if you wanna do this kind of the correct way and solder these wires in, you'll need to strip back a small section of the green and the black wire. Remember, we don't do anything with the white wire, just the green and the black. You'll strip them back and you'll strip back the ends of your splice wires, wrap them around and solder them in. And then if you kind of want to make it super clean, you can actually cut these wires, slip some like uh, heat shrink wrap over them and over these. And once you've got them soldered together, use a heat gun and uh, make everything look nice and clean. But I'm going to show you guys how to do it the quick and dirty way with uh, one of these inline splicers. Again, I don't really recommend doing it this way. Um, so kind of do as I say and not as I do. But these things are pretty cool. You see it's got uh, two holes for wire. This outer hole is going to be the one that the select switch wire goes through and then this inner hole that you can't see through that's going to be the side this camera will focus where we're going to take and slip our splice wire in and slip it all the way up in to where it stops and then again we'll slip this uh, little splice connector over the wire on the selector switch and then you take some pliers and you clamp down on this metal piece and that slices through both wires and makes the connection and it's got this handy dandy little piece that you fold over but you've got that done so we're going to do that for both the green and the black wire one on each and and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, here it is with the connectors installed. Again, we spliced into the green wire here and the black wire over here. And we've got our two leads coming out and I've already stripped the ends of the two leads. Now, I didn't bother using different color wire for these because it doesn't matter which one goes where. Um, like clarity doesn't really matter. It just matters that one has to go on one side and one has to go on the other side of the switch clutch lever. So it doesn't matter which one goes to the red on this, which one goes to the green on this. Just gotta be to the outside. It doesn't matter if they're switched or not. 
not just got to be on the outsides. Now what I will do is I'll uh, go ahead and wrap this up uh, in electrical tape, try and keep the water, weather, dust, dirt, debris out of it. Again, these are kind of bulky. Um, soldering these things in uh, is going to be a much cleaner install, much better install. And again, this is a quick and dirty way to do it. it took me like uh, maybe two minutes to get these things installed and clamped on here. So yeah, let's finish it up. I recommend before you cut any wires shorter, you go ahead and hook up your selector switch under the hood. You can see it's hooked into the Dynatech lead there. Got our selector switch and our wires running up towards the handlebars. And go ahead and install your clutch lever. And so that way you kind of know where everything needs to land. We've got plenty of wire here. I'm going to have to shorten up everything. So now I'm going to cut these wires to length, shorten them up, strip the ends, put on my shrink wrap, and then butt splice them together. And then the actual physical install of this part will be done. All right, here's a finished shot of the install. Everything spliced together, shrink wrapped in. And just remember, the two leads coming out of here need to go to the outside terminals or outside wires on the switch clutch lever. All right, so now we've got most of the physical install completed. We've got the wiring complete from the Dynatech selector switch to your clutch lever. Now we've got to program the Dynatech ignition so that it works and works well with your two-step wiring. So you're gonna to need to fire up your Windows laptop or PC and follow the instructions that come with the Dynatech USB adapter kit so that you can install the driver as well as the Curve Maker software that will allow you to program your ignition. And the driver and software, it should come on that little mini disc that's inside the Dynatech USB adapter kit. And if you don't have that, you should be able to go to the Dynatech website and download both the driver and the software from there. I'll stick a link to the Dynatech website in the video description. So I'm gonna stick the instructions that come with the Dynatech USB adapter in the video now. And again, you're gonna follow these. You're gonna install the driver, install the Curve Maker software. I recommend going ahead and restarting your laptop or PC to make sure that all the changes take effect. And then the next step, you're gonna need to grab your Dynatech ignition. You can pull it off of the bike or you can actually program the ignition with it still hooked up to the wiring harness these two here you can do it with it still hooked up on the bike the USB adapter kit comes with a really long lead so there really is no need to remove the ignition but nonetheless you're gonna need to find this four pin lead here that is coming off the ignition and remove the dust cap from it like this next you'll take the Dynatech USB adapter and plug it in make sure you put it in firmly till it clicks Make sure this end of the cord is plugged into the USB adapter and take the other end, plug it into your laptop or PC. Next, you'll open up the Dynatech Curve Maker software with the 2004 Plus TRX 450R version of the program. And that'll look like this. So you go up here to the top where the tabs are and you'll go to curve one. This is the curve that'll happen when your clutch is in. So we generally set this somewhere between 8,000 and 8,800 RPM, a lower RPM. And you do that by updating the RPM limit at the bottom. Curve one defaults at 11,000. So we'll set this at 8,500 and then you have to hit the update curve button. I'll show you what happens up here whenever we do that. You can see this red line here will move to the left to 8,500. That'll be the rev limit for curve one with the clutch in. Next, you wanna go to the tab for curve three. This is gonna be the ignition curve for when the clutch is out or released. So again, for this one, you're gonna to wanna to come down to the RPM limit. And let's say you wanna make this 11,200. So you'll update it there, hit the update curve button, and you're good to go. So you've got your curve three, which is clutch out, which is what you're gonna be going down the track with. And you've got your curve one, which is clutch in, which should be a lower RPM limit, which is what you'll launch with. So once you've got both curves updated, again, you gotta make sure that you hit update curve on both of the tabs to actually send the curves to the Dynatech ignition. You have to hit the send curves button. So it'll work for a minute. And if the curves are sent successfully, it'll pop up with a dialog box and you select okay. So now you're good to go. You've successfully programmed a two-step into your Dynatech ignition. Okay, so a couple of notes, a couple of caveats here. When you hit the send curves button, it sends all four curves at once. One, two, three, and four. So when you're programming your ignition, if you want something different on curves two and four, make sure that you go ahead and program those 
before you hit send curves. Something else to note over here on the right hand side of each of the four curve tabs, you've got your RPM and timing advance settings. I would recommend leaving those alone unless you are actually testing ignition timing curves on the dyno. Going too far with your ignition advance is an easy way to hurt your motor. Also over here on the right hand side where you've got your RPM and your ignition advance settings, there are three different tabs. There's full, part, and closed. And these different settings only work if you've got your TPS or throttle position positioning sensor. I guess what it stands for hooked up to an FCR carburetor. Otherwise, if you've got an FCR and you've got your TPS unhooked, or if you're running like a HSR or Electron, then the ignition curve is always going to default to the full throttle position. So you only have to worry about the full tab. But regardless, the RPM limit that you set on each of the tabs is for that curve for all three throttle positions, closed, part, and full. All right, so here is what the two ignition curves look like for something like the little bike and that's my full plastic little drag bike it likes 32 degrees of timing i have a two-step wired into it i currently have a electron carburetor on it so no tps it defaults to the full throttle position and so here's what curve one looks like for the little bike once we get to about 3800 rpm i flatline the timing to 32 degrees all the way down my rpm limit is 8800 again that's with the clutch in that's what i leave the line at and then if we go over to curve three you can see i've got the timing flat Flat line from 4200 and up at 32 degrees and my rev limit is 11,200. So again, this is for the little bike. I've verified on the dyno that it likes 32 degrees. It's a drag bike, so I flatline the timing curve just like this. And so you can just kind of use this as a point of reference. Take it or leave it for your application. But again, I would not recommend messing with any of the timing advance unless you're on the dyno and able to see what every one to two degrees of timing is doing to your power. So we're going to update both curves make sure they're updated send them we're gonna wait for it to send the curves to the box once we see our curve sent successfully gonna click OK exit the program we'll disconnect everything plug our dust cap back into the programming port hook your ignition back up if you disconnected it in the first place and last but not least you're gonna want to make sure your selector switch is set to curve 3 and that is the left switch should be up and the right switch should be down that'll make everything that we just did work quick note on troubleshooting if the curve maker software is having issues sending the curves to the ignition i recommend first and foremost unplugging everything and restarting your pc or laptop and bringing curve maker back up disconnect and reconnect the usb adapter to the programming port on the ignition disconnect and reconnect this side of the usb adapter kit and disconnect and reconnect the usb plug to and from your laptop or pc if none of those steps work and curve maker is unable to read your ignition or send the curves to your ignition you may have a faulty USB adapter kit or you may have a faulty ignition. I would recommend contacting Dynatech for some further troubleshooting help. If everything works out and you're able to send your curve successfully to your ignition, hook everything up, but your two-step is not working correctly as you think it should, first attempt disconnecting and reconnecting your selector switch to and from the port that leads to the Dynatech ignition. Next, make sure your wires are hooked up to the correct color wires of the selector switch. Finally, make sure that the leads coming off of the selector switch are hooked up to to the wires or the prongs on the outsides of the clutch lever. And then finally, make sure your selector switch is on curve three. If you've got it set on curve one, the ignition will be on the lower rev limit with the clutch in and out. Couple of closing notes. If you don't wanna use your two-step, you can either take and set your selector switch to curves two or four, or you can unplug the selector switch completely, which makes the ignition default to curve four. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, family, mom, uncle, cousin about it. And see if you can get them to subscribe too. In between videos, you can always follow me on social media. I am at Hot Boys Racing on Instagram, two T's. And you can like and follow our page on Facebook. It's also Hot Boys Racing with two T's. I'll stick links to both of those in the video description. As always, thanks for watching.